The practice of magical skills and abilities is a concept present in all sorts of cultures the world over. Skimming through the pages of history, you are most definitely going to find across many varied references to witchcraft and spellcasting. Some cultures see these practices as benign or even positive. However, we as human beings have never been exceptionally good at dealing with things that are hard to explain or understand. Thanks to this lovely self-preservation tactic, we often banish magic practitioners to the periphery, left to fend for themselves and curse the society that banished them. As such, witches have tended to be painted as horrible hags, evil women who perform demonic rituals, and flesh-rending devils. Witch phobia has also been the driving force behind the slaughter of innocents. Salem witch trials, anyone. And you can't just go out and kill a bunch of people accused of practicing magic without having a few curses cast upon your eternal soul, right? Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I am your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we are going to be counting down the top 5 scary witches in horror movies. Before we get started, make sure to give us a big thumbs up down below and subscribe for some more witchy videos. Let's get started. Starting off our list at number 5, we've got The Witch in the Woods from The Witch. While they may seem like a relatively small threat today, witches were extremely scary to the God-fearing population back in the olden days. We find out exactly why in Robert Eggers' directorial debut detailing a New England folktale. The Puritan family is banished from their colony over a religious argument and is left to fend for themselves in the forests beyond. Here they are tormented by a witch who calls these very woods her home. If the events in this movie are based on accounts of witchery from way back in the 1630s, I can totally understand why people were so up in arms about spell casting. This witch steals an unbaptized baby, grinds it up, and rubs the ground baby meat all over her body. She curses the family's crops, which cause them to infight and blame each other for some of the magical acts. The twin siblings, creepy on their own, are bewitched and begin to speak with their goat and freak their parents out. The witch induces nightmares and leads to one terrifying dream involving a raven pecking at some living flesh. I'll say no more. The horny pubescent Caleb is seduced, cursed, and left to die of an unknown illness. And by the way, he also vomits up an entire bloody apple. Black Philip, the family goat, is in cahoots with the witch and gores the dad before inviting Thomason to live deliciously, which coincidentally is the inspiration for one of my favorite memes of the decade. Mom says it's my turn to live deliciously. All in all, the witch is bad news, and we never really learn too much about her intentions beyond causing chaos and inviting someone new into the coven. Plus, as all good movie baddies do, she represents more than malevolence. She exposes all sorts of fears that surround religious extremism, like the fear of nature and the unknown, the arrogance and pride of the banished father, the crippling self-doubt within all people, and the disintegration of the traditional family when put under stress. Coming in at number 4, we've got Haggis from Pumpkinhead. This ugly number is the old witch of the woods from the Pumpkinhead series. She's even scarier than the titular revenge demon. Crazy, I know. Haggis is a cautionary tale of sorts, using our protagonist Ed Harley as a shining example of what not to do. Grief stricken by the accidental death of his son, Ed seeks out Haggis to see if she can bring the young boy back to life. Unfortunately, Haggis offers him the opportunity for vengeance instead. Without warning him of the costs of his revenge quest, she takes some of his blood, cuts it out of his hand, along with some of his son's blood, and then begins a ritual to bring Pumpkinhead back to life. Never a good idea to make a demonic blood pact with a witch. I'm, I'm just putting that out there. The revenge journey surprisingly doesn't make Ed feel any better, and he realizes probably wasn't the right call. In the end, he dies trying to stop the monster, and Haggis takes his body, buries it in Pumpkinhead's grave. Yikes. He'd become a demon in his own right. Haggis is then free to continue on as she was before, casting spells and waiting for her next victim to approach with an unnatural request. This leaves us with some lessons though, right? So listen up. Revenge is a never ending cycle, deals with the devil always have hidden clauses, and don't trust a witch named after sheep stomach. Coming in at number 3 we've got Asa Vajda from Black Sunday. So Black Sunday is this Italian horror movie from the 60s that was actually banned from the UK until 1968 due to graphic content. These giallo directors love to make wicked movies about witches. It was actually so brutal that western audiences only got to see censored versions in theaters. Still holds up today. The witch is largely to blame for these insane bouts of violence and gore. Hundreds of years before the plot begins, she was a practitioner of the dark arts along with her lover. They were discovered by her brother and sentenced to death for sorcery. Now you can probably guess what happens next. She curses him in his bloodline. Yes, she would even curse her own family. It's hardcore. 
Her execution is one of the most brutal I've ever heard of. You ready? Okay. So they take a metal mask with spikes on the inside and they hammer it into her face. And there are two extra long spikes just for her eyes. It's like an Iron Maiden, but just made for your dome. Holy crap. Get it? Hundreds of years later, she is accidentally brought back to life by some spilled blood, and so begins her revenge scheme. Using her telepathic powers, she revives her long dead lover, and they begin to take servants under their control. With the ability to manipulate men through seduction, magic, and a cursed kiss, as well as the power to drain her descendant's life and gain immortality, she is a dangerous spellcaster. So watch out for her, okay? Although I'm sure some of you wouldn't mind being her servant. No judgment. Take up our number two spot, we've got Mother Suspiriorum from Suspiria, 2018. No hate to Helena Marcos, alright? She's a hugely horrifying witch in her own right. And in fact, if we were just to ignore the 2018 version and only analyze the original Argento edition, Marcos would have definitely made the list for sure. A rapidly deteriorating, power hungry horror with a really great reveal is always a welcome addition to my spooky Rolodex. However, Mother Suspiriorum has to take the cake. Revealed in her true form at the end of the remake, Suspiriorum is the catalyst for one of the craziest scenes I've seen in years. The disemboweling of young dancers, exploding heads of false prophet worshippers, and the frantic, shivering dancing. All incredible and deeply disquieting stuff. Plus, the surprise reveal of who Suspiriorum's incarnate really is, is a great twist. And being able to summon death incarnate is a sweet piece of magic. What makes Suspiriorum even scarier though is her backstory. What is Mother Suspiriorum? Well, she is actually one of the three mothers watching over the Marcos dance company. The other two being Mother Tenebrarum and Mother Lacrimarum. Representing darkness, tears, and sighs, the three mothers are integrated into Dario Argento's Three Mothers trilogy. The Italian giallo master imbued his movies with some incredibly deep lore. The original Suspiria was actually the first of three in this trilogy, with the other two movies being Inferno and The Mother of Tears. They were based on an essay called Lavana and Our Ladies of Sorrow by Thomas De Quincey. De Quincey wrote, I want a term expressing all the mighty abstractions that incarnate themselves in all individual sufferings of man's heart. And I wish to have these abstractions presented as impersonations, that is, as clothed with human attributes of life and the functions pointing to flesh. Let us call them, therefore, Our Ladies of Sorrow. The three mothers are the incarnation of human suffering. Suspiriorum is elaborated upon and imbued with perishing dreams and delirium. Argento takes this idea and makes Suspiriora the power that lies in suffering, the agony used to develop intellect and spirit, conceptions of the infinite that are only accessible through pain and sorrow. So, Mother Suspiriorum is the embodiment of suffering for growth, agony in exchange for greatness. Not everyone can handle that trade off, and the weakest are culled. That's what I call a powerful witch. And finally, in our number one spot, we've got the Blair Witch from the Blair Witch Project. So if you know anything about the Blair Witch Project, you know that it's somewhat based on real events, and it all happened in the 1700s, and into the 1800s, I guess, which makes it all the more horrifying. So in 1785, Ellie Kedward was banished from Blair after being accused of witchcraft. She was hung from a tree with stones tied to her limbs, stretching and deforming her body. The villagers assumed she died from exposure, but when they went back to retrieve the body, it was nowhere to be found. Villagers and children started to disappear and people fled Blair, never to utter the name Ellie Kedward again. There's even a book published in 1809 detailing these events called the Blair Witch Cult. So Ellie is assumed to have become the Blair Witch that haunts Black Hills to this day and is the main focus of the Blair Witch franchise. A horrific, shape-shifting monster, she takes the forms of all sorts of nasty beasts to scare her victims. She's been seen as a floating humanoid, a naked old lady covered in thick black hair, and many other ghastly forms. It's actually been theorized that she has has no real default form of her own, and is just a ghost that holds domain over the forest and all who enter. Is there anything left of Ellie Kedward inside, or has it become a totally inhuman being? While her motives are foggy at best, the Blair Witch has a sadistic streak. She loves to stalk and torment victims before killing them. There's a method to her madness though, as she will kill people in a specific order if they perform certain actions. In the movies, we don't hear the witch communicate much, but based on how some characters act, we can assume that she is able to torture people into compliance and issue commands. Is she just trying to keep people out of her wooded home, or is she attempting to create and maintain her own Blair Witch legend? We may never know for sure. But hey, you guys are brave, right? Does somebody want to go and ask her what she's up to and let me know? 
And that's it, five of the scariest movie witches I could find. What do you think? Please don't snitch, okay? I can't have these witches finding out that I'm dragging them online. If you think the coven needs a few more members, let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some from last time. Anardana Lazarus says, You're not Canadian, you haven't said buddy, nor friend, nor guy. Let me, I'm gonna do my best. Listen here, buddy, you want my friend? You hear that, guy? I don't have the flapping mouth, I'm sorry. Moon Knight 8 says, the poor horse deserves a name. How would you name him, Keegan? I'd probably name him something weird like the rest of those Kentucky Derby horses. You know, something like Peanut Butter Sandwich or Old Coffee the Third. Or maybe I'll go Norris and name it Slipnir. Hmm. Joseph Mays says, this channel is going to hell. Well, Joseph, considering the spooky theme of this channel, I'd be mad if we weren't. Can't have top five scary videos full of sunshine and lollipops, can we? Bring on the nine circles. Multiplayer says, I'm never going outside. Same. D Saw says, last thing dinosaurs saw before extinction, a meteorite. Last thing humans saw before extinction, a horse. See, that's exactly where my brain went when I found out about 2872. I like the way you think, D Sauce. That's that. We're done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Today, witches were extremely scary back. Uh, mm -mm -mm. The horny prepubescent Caleb. I guess he's pubescent. The horny pubescent Caleb. Oh, I kind of already covered that, eh? Boy, I'm, uh, I'm far ahead of myself here. I'm making my own jokes like 10 lines earlier. Unbelievable. Asa Vajda. Vida Vajda. Oh no. Is it Vida or Vajda? <laughs> what is this? One sec. I'm gonna do a cursory yeah. Google search. Yeah. Marcos would probably have made the list for sure. Shouldn't say probably. Marcos would have definitely made the list for sure. I don't like how I said that. That sounded like I was just vomiting alphagetti. <laughs> mother Tenebrarum. Ten Tenebrarum. Tenebrarum and Mother La. la uh, I thought I had these two. I, I, these ones are ones that crack. It's Why can't I say this? So this Italian Giella director, master. Ay, 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 ay. Well, her mari, the, 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 her mari, yes. Well, her mom, well, her mom. I always put spaces here and I have to wait like five minutes. Mm-hmm.